Good evening, everyone. This is Mitch. Hope you've had a great Thursday. Hope you've had a great work week so far. We're almost to the weekend, so thank God for that. It feels like it's been about the longest week for me personally as possible. Um, I've been just under the weather. Uh, I'm, I'm to the stage where I'm just coughing like crazy. All my kids are coughing like crazy. And uh, yeah, it's just rough, but I'm getting through it. We're fighting through it, so uh, hopefully we'll be better by the weekend. But hope you guys are having a great day, a great night. I'm going to give you an update on what looks to be an active period of weather uh, next week. Basically, it uh, has a chance to be pretty active for the entire week. Um, there is the, a little bit of a severe weather threat that I'm not going to talk much on tonight, um, but we'll talk a little bit on the winter weather aspect of this. We're going to get a lot more detailed on this uh, throughout this coming weekend, and uh, we'll get into the range of short-range models. And uh, for areas that are very dry right now, especially in the Carolinas, uh, there is hope that maybe next week we flip to a more active pattern as far as wet weather and we'll finally get a little bit more rain in here. So there is signals for that, but there is also a pretty stout signal for a significant storm system sometime midweek next week for the Northeast. And it's going to come very close to the big cities of New York City, Boston, who knows, maybe areas a little bit further south for big time snows, um, uh, which is pretty impressive to fit a a a winter storm in a really pretty much a crappy pattern for winter weather in general as it just looks uh, warmer than average weather is going to dominate over the next 7 to 10, maybe 15 days. And I, and I hate to say it, it's got me a little bummed out. It's got me a little bit out the Christmas spirit, but uh, I know it got up into the mid-70s here in central South Carolina. We're probably going to get close to 80 degrees tomorrow. And uh, yeah, it's just nothing like 80 degrees in December to get you in a Christmas spirit. That is sarcasm, by the way. <laughs> But let's get going here. If you guys have not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. It's much appreciated. Your support is definitely appreciated, even in the slow times, which are right now. I do anticipate things to get active regardless. We can't we can't fend off winter forever. But let's look at the latest European, the latest GFS, and let's just roll through it. The latest European here. Let's get this a little bit bigger. Active pattern continue. <coughs> active pattern continues to set up with the jet stream is. You have a system that moves through here Monday. This is going to be a pretty pretty significant system as it is. It's got a lot, a little bit of a calm ahead up here, low pressure tracking well north, way up here in Canada. And uh, you have to watch out for some very severe weather here Monday for areas of the deep south. We'll get more detailed about that when we get more into the short range models, which we will here in the next 24 to 36, 48 hours here. Uh, but we have to watch out for a limited severe weather threat here. Uh, it can happen in December, especially in the south, not so much in the north. Uh, but this still has this storm chance has a chance to bring some wet weather for mainly areas of the western south. This looks like it dries out as m most of the energy is is well to the north here. And guys, sorry if I kind of slander my words a little bit. I'm really really stuffed up right now. Thought about not even making a video tonight, but uh, I want to keep pumping out content for you guys. But this turns into a pretty monster of a storm in southeast Canada. So. We're in Southeast Canada up in here. Let me dismiss that because nobody cares. Um, this looks like a pretty significant storm for Canada. Maybe, you know, borderline blizzard conditions, major snowstorm. And this does have a chance to be a back end snow event for areas of the interior northeast, especially higher elevations. Uh, Maine fires off the lake effect snow, uh, put, puts a little bit of a cool shot for areas of the eastern U.S. very briefly. And then this system sets up here. Um, and watching how these two pieces of energy interact is very is a big time key component of this setup here. Um, but this looks to bring moisture to everybody, even areas into the Carolinas who are very dry right now. But look at the winter weather aspect of this part of this. This has the makings of a big time significant winter storm. How far south is it? That that's a big question here. Does it make it to New York City, Boston? As this is just a, the first widespread winter storm for the Northeast. That is still the question here as we're still waiting to see if the southern stream energy gets out in front of the northern stream energy. If it does, it'll connect. It'll pull in a little bit more cold air. We'll have a more, more robust system, and we could be talking about a nor'eastern. So um, there's a lot of things on the table, but even with this, even if something like the European was to happen, this would bring a lot of heavy snow to uh, just inside interior areas of the Northeast and uh, maybe another area. A low pressure pops off here and delivers a little bit more moisture. So in the southeast, we're not talking snow, guys. What we're really hoping for is just some rain. 
But another system fires up here at the very end of the Euro, but it's very far out, so it's hard to take it serious. Look at the GFS, same system. Here comes the first system early next week. Um, watch out for severe weather maybe down here. We'll talk more on that here in the coming days. Uh, maybe a little bit of rain turning to snow here in the interior northeast. Rain for everybody. Here comes the second system. It's a lot more warmer here. Uh, the system in general just isn't as intense, but you check it out. Look at look at the rain down here in the southeast. We need the rain. We really do. I know rain's boring. It's just rain, but we need it. <clears throat> we really do. Um, show snow also for the interior areas of the northeast, but it's nothing unheard of, crazy, or unheard of or crazy for this time of the year. Uh, then it shows that other robust system popping up, uh, delivering a reinforcing shot of rain. And here comes another system. What these systems are basically doing, they're cutting because you have a little bit of a nudge of a southeast ridge popping up over the southeast. So the jet stream is more so digging out here as <clears throat> basically what's happening here is you're getting a buckle in the jet stream finally right here. Uh, and you're getting more cold air to the west as it, that that broad ridge is finally breaking down to the west. So the jet stream is buckling, which means you have more cold air, but it's 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 dipping here way out in the west in the Midwest. It's not dipping here in the east. So that's why it's showing these powerful storm systems with some big time snows uh, way out here because it's showing cold air available. And I, I will show you on the GFS what I mean by the two pieces of energy. So here comes the first storm system monday <clears throat> here comes our second system um tuesday here and here's this piece of energy this is the southern stream this is the northern stream look at the northern stream energy way out in front of the southern stream energy uh that's not going to work if you want a big time storm you need this system to be a little bit more out in front of the northern stream energy and for these to interact and really basically get a big time system but that southern stream energy eventually moves through and promotes still some some not some some rain for the southern U.S. But we'll watch to see what happens with that. We have a lot of time to work here with that. But here is the latest European operational run, just not the ensemble's operational run, and uh, some pretty significant snows just basically just outside the New York City and Boston area, especially as uh, it shows interior areas of Massachusetts getting hammered with close to a foot of snow. So if this was to happen, this would be a nice holiday snow. Nothing too crazy, I don't think. But if you look at the EPS ensembles through next weekend, pretty solid signal for a moderate, some moderate snow, maybe heavy snow. This could trend upward. Uh, we have some time. The GFS is not agreeing with this second storm. It really isn't. So we'll see if this gets upticked overnight. We'll see how this does over the weekend. As far as the, as far as just precipitation in general, we'll go about nine days out. Solid signal for rain here in the mid in the mid to deep south especially western areas like mississippi alabama louisiana the and that is because these systems are basically cutting so low pressures are riding a little bit of the buckling of the jet stream right here so they're riding up through here and or right here and uh, that is bringing basically storm systems to the south this is good this is good news because we need rain and we don't need it all at once but i'll show you what i mean with the jet stream here you know for the last few days it is, you know, well, let's back it up all the way until about right now. So the jet stream has been moving through here, promoting some clipper type systems, some lake effect snows. Uh, eventually it's going to buckle as we get into the weekend. Here comes that buckle. Here comes, this will bring a little bit of cooler air briefly for like literally a day for the eastern U.S. Meanwhile, it buckles big time right here. And then you have a flow moving out the southwest right here. And you've got short waves that could potentially ride this buckle in the jet stream and uh, give some moisture for the eastern U.S. So we'll see what happens here. Um, but I tell you, if you live in the eastern U.S., especially the southeast, mid-Atlantic, um, very warm temperatures are going to dominate the first half of December. In fact, it looks like we're going to waste a large portion of December on above average temperatures. But we'll see what happens for the mid part of the month to the late part of the month, just in time for Christmas. I'm always praying for that miracle snow around Christmas time. So that's all I got. Thank you all for tuning in tonight. Sorry I'm under the weather still. Hopefully I'll get better by this weekend and be a little bit more clear and thorough for you guys. But thank you all for tuning in. Have a blessed night.